Hey guys, this is my review of the Thrustmaster HOTAS Warthog. The Warthog is a licensed replica by the US Air Force. Alright, let's start. The HOTAS Warthog comes with a stick, a base for the stick, a throttle quadrant, and an instruction manual. Let's look at the base first. The base has 16-bit resolution magnetic sensors for each axis, so they're very precise and have no twitching. There's no twist axis because it's intended that you use rudder pedals with this. On the back, there is a 72-inch USB cable. There is a base plate that's meant for desktop use, and under the plate there are four rubber pads so that it doesn't slide around. There are also four mounting holes. The base can be taken off of the plate by removing these four screws underneath. Removing the base allows you to attach it to different things. For example, I've attached it to this desk mount. On top, there's a connector to attach the Warthog stick. This connector is also compatible with the Thrustmaster Hornet and Cougar sticks, and with Verbal sticks. The base uses a ball and socket system, which generally works well, but I've found that it has a stiction problem. You see, the stick is smooth while it's moving, but when you hold it in one place and then try to move it, there's a certain force that you have to overcome before it starts moving again. When you overcome this force, the stick sort of jumps. You can see the stiction in this video. I've heard that you can fix this problem by removing the grease that it comes with and putting a dampening grease inside. The grease that seems to be popular for this is Niogel 767A. I haven't tried this myself, but it seems to work for everyone, so if you want to get rid of the stiction problem, then you may want to look into that. To be clear, the stiction is not a big deal, I usually don't notice it while playing, it's just that this bass is not going to be as smooth as basses that use gimbals with cams instead of the ball and socket joint. The bass has a very strong spring inside that requires requires a lot of force to move. If you put this on a desk mount like me, then it won't be a big deal, but on a desktop, it may be uncomfortable to use and hard to make precise movements due to the amount of force needed to move the stick. If you find that it takes too much force to move the stick, there are weaker springs that you can buy online. I would also note that when using this base, the stick does not move smoothly through the center point, it stops and then continues. The stick is a replica of the one in the A-10 Warthog and F-16 Falcon. It's made completely of Zamac metal, however the real Warthog stick is made of aluminum. Due to the metal construction, this stick is very heavy. It has a big handrest, which is convenient for desktop use, and on the bottom there's a connector for attaching the stick to the base. Keep in mind, this stick can also be attached to verbal bases. Let's go over all the switches now. On the bottom, there's a paddle switch. Although it has a long throw, this in fact activates a button and not an axis. Above it, there's a button for your pinky, and above that, there's a five-way hat switch for your thumb, with forward, backward, left, right, and press. In front of that, there's a two-stage trigger, and there's a push button on the side. Side. On the head of the stick, there's a push button on the top left, two four-way hat switches on the bottom, and an eight-way hat switch on the top right. All the buttons on the stick are regular micro switches, however they look like mil-spec switches due to the big caps on top. The buttons have somewhat strong springs in them and have more travel than switches from most sticks. These features were designed to make them feel more realistic, however when you get to the end of the switch's travel you can feel that they just activate regular micro switches and that they're not actually mil-spec switches. The last thing to note about this stick is that the paddle switch is very long and may get in the way, especially when wearing gloves. Luckily, it can be easily removed and reattached using this bolt. The paddle switch also has a hex screw on the bottom, which allows you to adjust its throw. The dual throttle quadrant is also a replica. It has a base with some switches on it and two throttle handles. The base is made completely of metal, and the throttles are made mostly of plastic with two metal plates on the back. Most of the switches are metal with plastic caps on top. Because of the metal construction, the throttle is very heavy, just like the stick. Each throttle handle is connected to a high-resolution magnetic sensor. The throttle handles can be connected to each other using this bolt here. Each throttle handle has afterburner and idle detents. You can place the throttle into the off detent by lifting it and pulling it back. This will activate a virtual button. You can bring it into the idle position by lifting it and moving it forward. This will deactivate the button. The afterburner detents are optional and are disabled by default. To enable them, use a hex wrench to remove these two screws and then lift this cover off. Then you can pull the afterburner detent out, flip it around, and put the cover back on. Now with the afterburner detents enabled, you'll have to lift the throttles in order to move them all the way forward. The afterburner detents will not activate any kind of virtual button. The throttle base has green LED backlights and five LEDs on the top. All of the LED lights can be customized in the Thrustmaster software. On the right side there's an axis wheel with a detent in the middle, and on the top there's a wheel which controls the friction for both of the throttles. 
In the back, there's also a 72-inch USB cable, and on the base of the throttle, there are four mounting holes and rubber pads, just like the base plate of the stick. Let's go over all the switches now. On the top of the base, there are two two-position latching switches. Up activates a button, and down deactivates it. Below that, there are two three-position switches, with the up positions being momentary, and the down positions being latching. Up activates one button, and down activates a different one. Below them, there is another two-way latching switch, and below that, there's a push button. On the bottom left, there are two more two-position latching switches, then a push button, then a three-position latching switch. On the left side of the throttle, there's another three-position latching switch with a plastic cover. On the left throttle handle, there's a three-position latching switch and a push button. On the right throttle handle, from the bottom to the top, there's a three-position momentary switch, a three-position latching switch, a three-position switch with forward latching and backward momentary, and a five way hat switch. On the front of the right throttle handle, there's a four-way hat switch and a slew controller with X and Y axes and a push button. Note that this slew controller has a small head and is tedious to use compared to the slew controller on an Xbox controller. However, after using it for a bit, you get used to it. I have heard that the newer Warthogs come with a better one, so this may not even be a problem anyway. One last thing to note about the slew is that the default firmware for the Warthog does not update its position very quickly, causing it to lag a little bit. Later in the video, I'll show you how to download a custom firmware so that the position updates normally. I'll now press every button on the stick and throttle so that you can hear what they sound like. You can skip this part if you want.
Setting up the Hotas Warthog is simple. Place the stick onto the base, and then tighten the metal screw to secure it in place. Then plug the stick and throttle into your USB ports in your computer. Now you should be good to go. If you want to test your stick and throttle, you can press the Windows button on your keyboard, and then type Setup USB Game Controllers. Click on your stick or throttle, and click Properties. Make sure Test is selected at the top, and you can test your axes and buttons. Notice how the slew controller on the throttle is a little bit laggy? There's some custom firmware which fixes that. Go to deltasimelectronics.com, click Install Instructions, and click Fast Slew Firmware to download the zip file. Extract the zip file and you'll find a folder with the custom firmware and instructions for how to install it. This firmware was created by Delta Sim Electronics, so credit goes to them. You'll need the Thrustmaster firmware update tool, so I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. I won't show you how to install the firmware in this video because the instructions included in the zip file are clear. I don't know if using non-Thrustmaster firmware voids the warranty, so do this at your own risk. After installing the new firmware, you can see that the slew updates quicker and that it's much nicer to use. If you decide that you don't like it, you can always revert to the old firmware. There are two pieces of software for this product, the Target GUI and Target Script Editor. I'll leave a download link to both of these softwares in the description. Both of them are designed for setting custom keyboard and virtual button bindings to the switches on the HOTAS Warthog. The difference is that the GUI is designed to give you an easy way to do this using a simple graphical interface, whereas the Script Editor allows you to have more control over the keybinds. I personally like the Script Editor more because I find the GUI to be a little bit tedious to use, and because the Script Editor can do lots of things that the GUI I just can't. For example, I use the script editor to virtually rotate the X and Y axes on my stick, and to have a maximum of 128 virtual buttons instead of 32. Although it looks challenging, the code for the script editor is not complicated and can be learned in a day. I'll leave a link to the manual for the GUI and script editor in the description of this video. I won't be going over how to use the GUI software because there are already many videos on YouTube for that, however I may make a video about the script editor. By the way, you can adjust the brightness of the LED backlights for the throttle and the target at GUI. Regarding the stick, the Warthog stick is an excellent one, so if you like the A10 or if you want all metal construction, I'd definitely recommend it. However, if you don't care about those things, then maybe you should search for different sticks to find the one that works best for you. Regarding the base for the stick, it's probably better to avoid it. Now, if you're buying the whole Hotas Warthog as a package, then it's fine, but if you're buying the pieces separately, then it would be a good idea to get a better base, such as one from Verpal, due to the stiction issues on this one. Regarding the throttle, it just depends on your preference. It's an excellent throttle, so if you want the A10, throttle and get it. However, if you don't necessarily care about having the exact throttle that the A10 has, then there are a lot of other great options out there like from Burple and Winwing. I've been using this whole HOTAS system for over a year now, and I've had absolutely no problems with it other than the stiction issues with the base. If you love the A10, I definitely recommend the stick and throttle, however, if possible, try to get a base that has a gimbal with cams instead of the ball and socket design in this gimbal. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.